<clears throat> oh, what an interesting day. I haven't been able to get out the door and get in. I got something I gotta do, but I figured I'd cover this first. Hey, this is another, another exciting moment. Not only did I see a red tailed hawk the other day riding up the side of my car, and I didn't see it in front of the car today, but my wife was screaming at me as I went to go pick up my goddamn moxie drink out of the car door. And I was, wasn't paying attention, but I was passing this house, and as I was driving by, going, uh, to say the right side of the, going towards the right side of the screen, this goddamn bastard flew right in front of the window, and my wife, look at that, look at that, take a fucking huge bird. As I turn my head, I look at this part of the yard over the mailbox. As I looked out the window, I could see, and this was not a hawk now. Once this, this was a goddamn horned eared owl. Now they intend to sometimes come out during the day, and today. It flew right over the friggin' pretty much almost the roof of my car, you know, right in front of the windshield part. And there it was flew right out in the back of that hole right here into the woods. Now whether or not it saw a prey or not, uh, I can honestly say that this just like the hawk the other day, <laughs> it was an amazing moment. And of course, this time the wife got to see this one. But, as they say, these birds come into your life, Native American spirits, and the Native American world has to do something with it beyond the grave. And when I seen that sucker going over that mailbox down into the woods in there, that thing was friggin' huge. It had to have had a three-foot wingspan. It was no bigger than the one I seen in this backyard of my house fly off. And when it was in the yard, and the dog actually, you know, it was in the other yard, but the dog saw it. And when I got out here, it was already picking up and flapping off. So, oh man, another amazing moment. I tell you, I, didn't, I haven't been ghost hunting lately, like I said. So, I don't know though if this was another message. Or maybe even if it could have been. My wife said, I mean, I have my sunglasses on, it looks red to me, but it had the white thing to it. And she said she saw brown, so it could have been the candy and, you know, owl. Or it could have even been a messenger from the, you know, the hot side, too. But I was going with the owl. Only because of this. I get home. I mean, I'm on my way home from this ride now, after seeing this bird. And, uh... <laughs> Oh man, the week just got worse. And not only did I lose a friend the other day, um, I get a phone call to help a gentleman down the road here that I met while I was working at the house I'm living in now. When I was just working here and cleaning up the backyard and, you know, cleaning up the papers in the house and, you know, I made a little relationship with the guy down the street. Pretty cool old man he was. So now, <laughs> you know, like I said, the week got bad. And his wife called me. And this is the first time, I mean, I've met her. Don't get me wrong. 
you know, I, you know, I spoke to her, I spoke to him, I even had him come over and help me with my uh, truck. Because I had to leave the kid in the truck when I was working here and he fell asleep. You know, one of them was, what the hell was that? <laughs> Something just flew down. And I can't get a... <laughs> But anyway, so oh man, I tell you, something just swooped down across to the other yard. What? <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's all right as I'm get the phone call. And like I said, I met the woman. I met him. He helped me out with the. He gave me a battery pack schedule. Because my truck kept dying over here, I had to lay the radio on for the kid when he come with me. And I could get my work done for a couple hours or an hour or whatnot, and the kid was sleeping, you know. And then the seat, like kids usually do. And you know, he gave me a battery charge, he gave me some other stuff, he started hooking up with him with metal and everything. And, and I was doing the metal running. And, you know, turn out to be a you know, real decent guy and someone to talk to and hey, there's some stories there. But, go we'll figure. <laughs> Today, I get the call. Then the wife calls and I'm like, shocked. I would have never expected this woman to ever call me. But with the goddamn horned eared owl, you should keep my thoughts and theories on this. And it is. They are two bringing messages that either an illness is coming or a death. It's not meant to be, you know, you hear all these, it's just bad luck, it's not bad luck. It is a warning sign. If you see a huge owl, horned eared owl, or the huge white faced owl, they are warning you something is going to happen, more or less towards the horn be it out. And that sucker flew by us today. And it was a message. This is what I'm about to say next. And like I said, there was a wife called me, asked me if I could take the metal, and they're all right. And I did notice in the past couple months, within the past year, I know that the guy over there, I called him the TV guy. But he also fixed TVs and he gave me one. And, you know, I gave him some stuff, you know, the type of ordeal, you know. You help me, I help you, and type thing, you know. And when you know, I goes over there to pick up the metal, I'm looking around, and I was gonna just say, hey, where's Richard? His name's Richard. You know, I used to go over there and say, hey, sir, yes, sir. You know, what's happening, boss, or something, because, you know, that's how I talk to all the people, you know, my, my elders, because, you know, they're the elders, they remind me of a boss, they remind me of a sir, and a military type thing. You know, I respect my elders, right? You know, he told me, I'm not a sir, don't call me sir, and don't call me boss, I'm not your boss, you know. Busting my chops. Well, he's, a, he's a character too, and a funny guy, and a joker. And, uh, you know, he said, My name is Richard. He said, My you know, and that all got squared up. But as I was to say, he was with me. His wife had just said to me right on my face, and said, Oh, yeah, I gotta clean this up. Uh, Richard passed away a few days ago. I'm like, Oh, my. You gotta be kidding me. So as I was standing there getting chills up the, up the back and the owl today of the message that death was going to, you know, be known for that was. Not the neighbor guy a few days ago. Oh, man. Two days ago. I can't say and I don't know when my buddy died. I'm about to wonder if they died around the same time that I Oh, man. But, 
This is living too. Hey, shut up. And when you see that owl, either an illness is going to come or you're going to be known. Hey, dog ain't around here. Shut up. Shut up. All right, Ted. But for me, that, that's just pregnant. So, the owl and the hawk have a, a purpose together. Um, and the raven. They all are messing in some point and way. They bring you messages from beyond the grave. And that, that thing, what it is to me, yeah, that they're all made of American birds. And, yeah. He's banging around, Ted. <laughs> but to me, that, that, yeah, it just don't make you a believer. All right? <laughs> And there's something wrong with me. But no lie today. Of course, I didn't even. I, I wish I had a goddamn dash key. You know, I wish I had a goddamn dash key. I'm about to wonder when I seen that goddamn park the other day. I wonder if that's when my buddy passed away. When I see the owl fly by, this guy passed away. That's why that hawk is flying towards my car. Put two and two together now. Uh, got two people down, I know. I wonder where the third one's gonna be. Always happens in threes. Um, but, man, I tell you, just like the friggin' all the hawk, I wish I had a dog and dash can or something. <laughs> And my phone, right? I always, you know, I even have it in the door of my pocket. And now they're going to be passing the law that if they, you know, you get your phone in your hand, you're going to get caught and fine and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, how am I going to get my proof if I can't catch it? I'm not going to be looking into a task memo, but I tell you, that thing. One day an hour was very close to the car, so we were right down here, right, right down here. And I mean, it was that close to my wife's car. <laughs> and I mean, when I turned, it was, I was like right in front of the driveway here. And I slowed down, and that thing was right over the mailbox in the yard. That's how close it was when I passed by it. And I saw it, and I turned my head out the window. That's how pretty close it was. Believe it or not, I don't care about anything. I know me, I'm getting closer to the spirit world, and it's been looming around me, boy. And <laughs> two messages now. Two messages from the hawk in the friggin' hour. Two people died. And now that I put this all together, it's like, damn! Ah, even the hawk was warning me about something I guess. Why I got so close to the car. So it's not a bad thing, but things happen. And, you know, I met my buddy had a rough life, so this guy down here is a good man. And that leads me to the grandest thing to say. And I said it in a post that I wrote. And it's leading me to say it now. I'm glad I brought it up. But to me, the big name in the sky, Mr. God, Mr. Jesus Christ, leaving the scum on this fucking earth and taking all the good people. You know what? To me, excuse me for my language, but that's fucking selfish. They want all the good up there. You know, the bad down here. And I'm not saying I may have my issues, but 
I guess he don't want me up there because he knows I'm going to put it in his face. You better hope I don't go up there. I don't care. I live around there in limbo. I linger around this goddamn earth. Don't put me on that goddamn stairway to heaven. Don't put me into that white light. I'm not going to be nice if I have to go up there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna complain. I will. I complain. I go up there and complain to everybody that has good and long. And, uh, I'd be taking away. You know, at least freaking wipe me out first. Because I don't want to watch this shit. But like, damn, man. I've lost a few things. The suicide. Maybe a day, I think he might have, I don't know how, I didn't ask, but I don't know, man. Last couple of days, I just been, oh, just trying to keep it straight, keep it real. That selfishness in the sky, man. Selfishness. You want to take the good for yourself? Man, I rather believe in my Native American blood and spirit, and I rather listen to the gods or the rulers of the warriors and the people that once lived before I even stepped on that stairway. Light. I don't want to go up there. You're taking all the good. Man. That would be real. I know I'd be up there. I'm not, I'm not the I just told my wife today I want to write my own obituary. And when I died, and I was unspoken that I was a man that spoke my peace and put the words to the bad for everybody to know. And I will not shut up. I will not do what people tell me to do to shut up. There's a truth to be spoken, there's a, there, you know, uh, the things that are good gone, and the filth that lives in the streets, the child molesters, rapists, cold-blooded killers, because are innocent. Oh, I love to wipe them all out, man. Now, wipe them all out. He is goddamn looking at every day walk the earth. One of my good people and friends have now lost their lives because of his selfishness. Um, I'm rambling on too much. But I wanted to share that with you. The phone there at our flew over my friggin' car today. And then I got a message from the gang. A good friend just passed away. Another good friend. I'm gonna call him a good friend. I only known him yeah, three years, but I didn't really much, you know, make sure he'd go over there for dinner or anything. But hey, he was an older gentleman. He had words of wisdom. He had stuff to make me, you know, on my bad days make me laugh and now he's gone. My friend is gone. I don't know. Anyways, anybody sees these birds and they start flying around you, take them messages when they get close. Because they're telling you something. Illness and death will be coming. There ain't no bad luck. It's just, if you can prevent something, and that's what I think it is, they're trying to help you before you lose it. And if I would have stayed in contact with my buddy more, man, I think I could have helped him a lot more. 
like I said, I, I told this guy's wife, I mean, hey, I was going to come over here and talk to him and everything, but their kids, my father, this guy had been driving around, my mother, you know, I got this, I got that, I got to be here, I got to be there, I got to go to the store, you know, I got to go to meetings and... You know, I got to go to the psychiatrist, my own meeting, this, that, this. Yes, it sucks that your friggin' life, as we know it, consists of nothing but run, 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 work, work, work. You know, your kids, 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 the, the wife, this, that, this. And, oh, man, then your friend is dead or this one's dead, and it's like, come on. Like I said, I'm rambling too much, but damn, too down. I guess I can say now I'm waiting for number three, but till that next video, I'll be safe. Take care. Out.